so we're, we're quite lucky now that we have several treatments available, available for keratoconus which we didn't have before. Um, so if I go back to the beginning, when you have keratoconus, the shape of your eye is, uh, is conical and so the focusing uh, in your eye is not is not normal and you will get halos or glare or um, uh, sort of uh, misshape, mis misshapen images and um, the treatment for that really is in milder forms we will use a glasses prescription if it gets worse then we will need to consider contact lenses and often contact lenses can smooth over all the irregular irregularities or most of them. Um, in patients previously we didn't have a treatment that could stop their disease and we're lucky now that we have a treatment called cross-linking which is where the uh, conical, um, the progressive conical nature of the disease can then be halted or we can uh, prevent or delay the progression and we do that by um, uh, an, a process of causing the collagen fibers which make up the cornea to cross-link and bind just like a, a, um, a wicker basket would and we strengthen it so then it prevents it from progressively becoming conical. Uh, that's a treatment that we didn't have previously and is nice approved now and uh, if your keratoconus is progressing that is, some, that is a treatment that you will often be offered now um, to prevent you from going on to the later stages. In the later stage of the, as of the disease you're really considering some form of surgical treatment and, and that, that involves either putting um, corneal uh, 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 rings into the eye and what that does is it basically flattens and, and makes the shape of the cornea much more regular. Uh, that can be, can be effective in a small subgroup of patients but is not always effective. Um, and then in severer forms we then have to consider corneal transplantation, either full thickness transplantation if there's deep scarring or um, as we like to often do is um, a partial thickness transplantation. In addition to all of that, often with keratoconus there are coexisting features, so the patients will often have a history of what we call atopy. So these are, uh, this is the atopic triad of asthma, eczema and hay fever, and often that can affect the eye, can cause the patients to then rub their eyes, and eye rubbing is a risk factor for keratoconus. So we will then um, treat the, uh, the reason that they're having to rub their eyes and reduce the inflammatory disease that comes as part of their keratoconus. Uh, Cross-linking doesn't um, uh, improve the vision, that's not its primary aim. Its primary aim is to halt the disease progression and prevent you from then requiring a corneal transplant later on. Um, and so, although some patients notice some stabilization of vision, there, it's not necessary that that will get, get rid of your uh, prescription or your astigmatism that you have. So, um, for keratoconus, the, there are two different forms of transplantation, either a full thickness transplant or a partial thickness. Both of those require stitches to the eye and we don't normally remove the stitches for about 12 to 18 months or certainly not all of them. Um, so it can take up to about a year for us to get f optimal vision um, back to the patient. So um, it isn't an immediate treatment, but it, on the whole, in the long term, you do get vision, vision back to, um, to, um, uh, to a good, to good functioning standard.